Chapter 6 What Experiences Lie Ahead of Us Personal Experiences as well as Experiences from Churches, a Conference and a Union The Experience of a Brother For the past two years, I have been praying daily for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in my life. My request is that Jesus will thus live in me in greater abundance each day. My walk with God during this time has been unbelievable. The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 has become more visible in my life since I asked Jesus to live in me, to do His will in me, and to daily renew me with the Holy Ghost. I have greater joy in reading the Bible, sharing Christ with others, and I have a strong desire to pray for others. Furthermore, my lifestyle has changed dramatically. I see this all as a confirmation of my daily search for God and my daily request for the Holy Ghost. He shared further, I challenge you to pray daily to be filled with the Holy Ghost for six weeks and see what happens. 40 Days of Prayer in Serbia In September 2010, we translated and published the book 40 Days, Prayers and Devotions to Prepare for the Second Coming. We made it available to all church members in our union. Then we organized weekly and daily prayer meetings during the following 40 days in local churches and in members' homes, where people fasted and prayed for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As this happened, a completely new climate began to develop in the local congregations. Inactive church members have become active and more interested in serving others. Those who fought with each other for years over different issues and had even stopped talking with each other reconciled and began making plans for community outreach together. Then in October 2010, during the annual council, the Revival and Reformation Initiative was introduced. We gladly accepted it, seeing it as a continuation of what God had already started in our union. We have seen closer fellowship greater unity and better common understanding among the union officials as immediate results of these prayer meetings. 40 Days of Prayer in Zurich, Switzerland Our pastor and I each received independently from each other a book which contents thrilled us. Its title is 40 Days Prayers and Devotions to Prepare for the Second Coming by Dennis Smith. Review and Herald Publishing Association. This book can't be read and then just set aside. The contents changed my life. Since our church in Zurich, Wolfswinkel, with about a hundred members, sensed a great need for revival and prayer, we planned 40 days of prayer for the fall of 2011. The book gave detailed and valuable information for this, and in addition, 40 appropriate daily worships. The topics deal with being filled by the Holy Ghost, prayer, preaching, the life of Jesus, and spiritual fellowship. So we started our 40 days on October 1st, 2011, with great anticipation and expectation. Fortunately, most of the church members took part. Prayer partners met to pray daily, text messages were sent daily, and people prayed over the phone every day. One group met every morning at 6 a.m. for worship and prayer. Our 40 days were an unforgettable experience. God answered many of our prayers, especially in connection with a series of lectures on biblical prophecy which took place at the same time. These lectures were a great blessing. We had many visitors and 20 people registered for the following prophecy seminar. Follow-up in March 2013, between 50 to 60 guests came, which hasn't happened in Zurich in 20 years. God's Spirit has made ongoing changes in our church, and it is a joy to see how our small groups are starting to grow and how church members who are eager to give Bible studies find interested people. Those who participated now have a deep desire for the continuation of the work of God's Spirit. We want to thank Him from our whole hearts and give Him the glory. 40 Days of Prayer and Evangelism in Cologne, Germany Pastor Jao Lotz is German-Brazilian. 
He worked for 38 years in churches and hospitals in Brazil, as well as in a union and the South American division. He retired in March 2012. He and his wife agreed to come to Cologne as His Hands missionaries and work in the Portuguese and Spanish-speaking countries. We started in Cologne with small care groups to encourage the church members and to invite guests. Based on our experiences in Brazil, we carried out 40 days of prayer in Cologne. The materials were available in Portuguese. The churches with Portuguese, Spanish and German-speaking members joyfully started the 40 days of prayer. We prayed daily for 100 friends and acquaintances. These people's names were written on a blackboard in the church. Not until we had reached the 30th to 35th day of prayer did we let these people know we were praying for them and at the same time invited them to a special Sabbath service for guests. 120 people came to this special church service. Christian Badoric, the director of personal ministries for Nordhein Westfalen, held the sermon. Some of the guests cried with joy when they saw their names on the board. Afterwards, Antonio Goncalves, an evangelist from Brazil, held an evangelistic series for 15 days. Each evening, he spoke for one and a half hours with translation. The title of the series was, Let the Bible Surprise You. The topics had to do with the Second Coming, as well as topics from Daniel and Revelation. The lectures and the songs were translated from Portuguese into German. There were small choirs and good music each evening. Every evening closed with an altar call. We are thankful for the good reactions. The church members prayed intensively, especially for the people from the 40 days of prayer. Our church sanctuary seats 80 people, but more than 100 people came. On the weekends, the church was full, and during the week, there were about 60 people. 32 guests attended regularly. This led to eight baptisms and 14 people joining the baptismal class. By the end of the year, 13 people were baptized. We have had many surprising experiences. It was difficult to find a translator. A Catholic teacher offered to help, but she didn't have much experience with the Bible. Then we prayed for a Protestant translator. Soon afterwards, we got to know a lady in a restaurant who explained that she translated with great joy from Portuguese to German in the Pentecostal church. She was our translator for the evangelistic series and she also was baptized. Maria, the translator, asked if she could invite her friend Elizabeth to come. She is the leader of a small Colombian church in Cologne with 13 members. She came and brought members from her church with her. Since then, two of these people have also been baptized. Elizabeth and her family are now receiving Bible studies. Another experience is connected with the Hope Channel. A German woman found the Hope Channel by coincidence and was impressed by what she heard, including what was said about the Sabbath. She invited her husband to listen with her. He also enjoyed the messages. One day when they went to visit her mother, they were impressed to drive along another route. Along the way, they saw a sign for a Seventh-day Adventist church. They realized they were the Adventists from Hope Channel. On Sabbath, she went to the church service. Then she invited her husband and then her mother to join her. Since then, all three of them have been baptized. Another experience involves a Russian-German sister. She took part in the 40 days of worship and started to pray for her Russian-speaking neighbors. When she told one of her neighbors that she was praying for her, the neighbor was very surprised and said that she was looking for a church that kept the biblical Sabbath. She and other neighbors came to the evangelistic series. Two of them have been baptized. Another experience involves a woman named Jean. She had been a member of the Baptist Church in Brazil and now she was searching in Cologne for a Portuguese-speaking church. She got in touch with the Adventist church, received Bible studies, and was baptized. After her conversion, she called her relatives in Brazil and told her uncle, who is an Adventist, 
that she is also an Adventist now. It was a big surprise for her mother, her siblings, and the Baptist Church in Brazil, which she had been a member of. Her family in Brazil subsequently visited an Adventist church to inform themselves about the Sabbath. This has led to five people being baptized in Brazil, her mother, two of her sisters, and other relatives. Now she is praying for the conversion of her other sister who lives in Argentina. She wants to be together with them in God's kingdom. Under God's leading, we have had many other experiences. At the first baptism, eight people were baptized, one each from Italy, Germany, Peru, Brazil, Ukraine, Venezuela, Colombia, and Russia. In the fall, we again had an evangelistic series in connection with the 40 days of worship. Jimmy Cardoso and his wife, who originally came from Brazil, but now live in the USA, held the evangelistic series. Although the series only lasted a week, we were able to baptize four dear people at the end. They had been having Bible studies previously. There were three Germans and one Italian. Both of the baptisms were held in the main church in Cologne, which has 400 members and a beautiful baptismal facility. We thank God that He surprised us in such a great way. I am convinced that He still has even greater experiences waiting for us. Please keep us in your prayers. Vital Intercession I first just simply read the book, 40 Days Book, through. From the first page on, I was very impressed. We shouldn't only pray for someone, but also affectionately care for them. This makes intercession come alive. Unfortunately, I had never seen intercession in this way before. Living out your faith. I am convinced that it is just as important for the person who is praying as it is for the person who is being prayed for. Likewise, it convinced me from the start that the fellowship in the church would be strengthened. Oh, I hope that such fellowship will happen as it is described in the last chapters of the book. To be honest, I had to cry because I have yearned for such fellowship for a long time. I am convinced that the book Christ in Me nurtures us and frees us from our own accomplishments. I have read several books about Christ in Me, but this book seems to be the most helpful. I believe that your prayer life will be strengthened by this book, that the fellowship in the church will be nurtured, and that it will make intercession more alive. This book gives me hope for myself, for the church, and for the world. I thank God for this book. Next, I plan to study the 40-day guidebook, pray over it, and then take it wherever God shows me. A few weeks later, I received another email from this sister. As you know, I simply read the book through at first. But since I have started to study the worships with my prayer partner, I have discovered that they are even more valuable than I thought at first. I have gotten answers to things which I hadn't been able to do on my own. Thank God for my prayer partner, who is participating intensively and actively. Not sure anymore. The booklet Steps to Personal Revival has touched me extraordinarily. Having been born in an Adventist family, I believed I was taking the right path. The chapter on the ten virgins, and especially Romans 8 verse 9. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his, really shocked me. I suddenly wasn't sure anymore if I had the Holy Ghost and if He was working in me because I was sorely missing the corresponding fruits in my life. This Sabbath afternoon, I finished reading the booklet and a profound and fathomless sadness came over me. Then I read the prayer near the end of the book and a deep desire arose within me to receive the Holy Ghost, to let Him change my heart and that God would form me according to His will. Know Him Some time ago I read your article on revival. I have been preoccupied with this topic for about three years. Now I just started to read Steps to Personal Revival. I can only say Amen to it. 
I am glad that in these pages, I found many of my own thoughts. I am under the impression that in our church, we are missing the goal by an inch. I can't shake off the feeling that we have lost sight of the essentials. Often it has to do with what is the truth, or how we should live, or how important prophecy is. And I'm not saying this is wrong, but we overlook why God gave us these things. Doesn't the truth aim for complete fellowship with God? Instead, shouldn't these areas help us really get to know God? Isn't the aim of prophecy that we acknowledge God's greatness and omnipotence, that we understand that He holds the whole world in His hand and directs it, and that in the same way He can lead and shape our lives? What is eternal life? John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In the parable, the bridegroom simply says to the five foolish virgins, I know you not. The aim of our faith is to simply know God, to have fellowship with Him, so that He can fill us as He filled the temple back then. 2 Chronicles 5, 13 to 14. And when He flows through us, fills our whole being, then we aren't living, but rather Christ is living in us. Amazing Answers to Intercession The second 40-day book from D. Smith is an unbelievable blessing for me. Some of the people I have prayed for have experienced a 180-degree turnabout in their lives. During the 40 days, I had a deep spiritual conversation with a friend. He told me that his life had taken a different course in the last few weeks. He had a greater need to pray was reflecting more on God's Word, and was able to let things go that had been valuable and desirable to him before. I got up my courage and told him about the 40-day book, and also told him that he was one of the five people that I was praying for. Then he responded in positive surprise, so you are responsible for this whole thing. A girl made the decision to dedicate her life 100% to God. Although she had been a believer since she was a child, she had been living without God. She had no interest in faith and was completely ensnared in a worldly life. She has completely changed now. Everyone who knew her and sees her now is amazed. She is studying the Bible with me now and is taking part in the 40-day program in our church and wants to encourage others to have a more serious faith life. Another young girl who I prayed for had to take part in a week-long training course and had to stay in accommodations together with the other participants. She was worried about spending this time with all these strangers. One day before she left, I encouraged her in prayer and told her that I had been praying for her for quite a while. So we prayed that God would give her peace in this situation and that He would make this experience an answer to prayer. During the training course, she called me and excitedly told me that God had done something unbelievable with her. He not only had given her perfect peace, but He had also given her the courage not to take part in the evening amusements, which consisted of discos, alcohol, etc. After the 40 days, I have continued praying for these people, since I have heard and seen the great ways in which God answers prayer. How God Works Through Intercession In the last five years, I had gotten completely out of touch with an important person to me. He seemed to ignore my messages. I had heard that he hadn't been going to church anymore over the past three years. He had grown up in the church, and that he was in a relationship with a non-Christian woman. I put this young man on my prayer list, even though I didn't think it would be possible to get back in touch with him since he lived 600 km away and never answered me. Nevertheless, I prayed for a sign of life. On short notice, I heard about the upcoming baptism of his brother, 
which just happened to be taking place near me and was on a date during the 40 days of prayer. It had originally been planned for another date. I decided to attend and met him. We were able to have a very deep discussion and he told me that for some time he had had an increasingly great need to come back to God but that he didn't have the strength to change his lifestyle. I told him that for the past 20 days I had been praying intensively for him and that even before that he had been on my prayer list. He was speechless that exactly during this time he had felt God working on him. During the very spiritual baptismal service, he was very moved and when the pastor made an appeal, I could feel the battle that was taking place in him and after a long struggle, he finally fell on his knees and started to cry. He surrendered himself to God again. At the end of the evening, he told me that he had decided to attend church regularly again and to change his lifestyle. He never expected this weekend to end in this way. A few weeks later, I met him at a youth mission conference, which again strengthened him and built him up. I thank God for the repentance of a beloved person. The Church in Ludwigsburg, Germany At first, we studied the 40-day book as a couple and experienced great personal benefit and blessings during the time of prayer. Afterwards, we organized a prayer meeting twice a week in the church and read the book with the church members. We distinctly experienced God's blessing and leading and experienced many miracles during the 40 days. As a church, God refreshed and revived us. Church members who had never had the courage to speak with strangers suddenly spoke with strangers by their own initiative. God is binding us as a church closer together through prayer together. We had the privilege of having special experiences in the intercession and support of the five people that we prayed for during the 40 days. God worked in a special way in these people's lives. Again and again, people from the street suddenly appear on Sabbath in the church service. We are giving Bible studies to one of these families. They had gotten acquainted with the Sabbath through videos in the internet and the book The Great Controversy and had been searching for a church for some time. 40-Day Experience Everything started with a seminar on steps to personal revival. At that time, a desire grew within me to experience God in my daily life. Then I heard about the 40 days of prayer and worship it was immediately clear to me I wanted to experience this adventure. Actually, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Finding a suitable prayer partner, which is part of the program, wasn't difficult. The challenge for me was to find time for each other every day for 40 days. As a nurse, I have very irregular working hours. I hadn't even thought about that. Nonetheless, God blessed my decision from the very start. With longing, I waited for those precious minutes of the day in which we could share with each other about the topic and plead for the Holy Ghost. We discovered that the prayers changed something in our lives and we couldn't keep it to ourselves. With every opportunity that came, we felt impressed to share something. It was important to me to motivate other people to have the same experience. The effect didn't fail to appear. Some church members were infected with our enthusiasm. Quickly, new worship pairs got together. We looked forward to sharing every week what we had experienced. This virus was also caught by a few of our youth. The 40 days ended much too quickly. We didn't want to and simply couldn't stop. So we continued our worship time with the book Maranatha, The Lord is Coming by Ellen White. And God didn't make us wait for long. Still, during the 40 days, He gave us many wonderful answers to prayer. Someone who we had prayed for during this time came into contact with the church again after a long absence. We were so happy. The people around me became more important to me. 
The desire to share God's love with other people grew stronger. My life changed. Many of us got to know and understand each other better. Many take part in each other's lives and are there for each other. Fellowship has a completely new meaning. The 40 days of prayer and worship by Dennis Smith was a great help to me. It is easier than it seems to find a prayer partner and to experience God. The people dear to us will thank us for it. Jesus, our example. Jesus is our greatest example in all things. In Luke 3, 21 to 22, we read, When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. Ellen White said the following about this event. In response to his prayer to his Father, heaven was opened, and the Spirit descended like a dove and abode upon him. It is amazing what happened during his ministry. Morning by morning, he communicated with his Father in heaven, receiving from him daily a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus needed a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit daily, then how much more do we need it? Closing Thoughts Through the Holy Ghost, we have a wonderful leader in all life situations and strength according to the riches of His glory. Thus, our characters can be changed and we can become valuable tools in God's work. Our daily surrender and baptism with the Holy Ghost will lead to a real breakthrough in our lives. The Lord wants to prepare us for the greatest time in the world's history. He wants us to be personally ready for His coming and that in the power of the Holy Ghost, we work together in completing the work of the Gospel. He wants to lead us victoriously through difficult times. Let God give you personal revival and reformation through daily surrender and a daily baptism with the Holy Ghost. I want to close with the Bible text and a prayer for revival. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 Father in heaven, please give us humility. Micah 6.8 Put in our hearts a great desire to pray and seek your face. Make us willing and help us to turn from our wicked ways. Please fulfill the prerequisites in us. And as a result of your promise, let us hear your answer. Forgive us for our sins and heal us from our lukewarmness and apostasy. Please help us to surrender ourselves to Jesus daily and by faith receive the Holy Ghost. Amen.